Roland Licioni offers the first course from the famed La Francaise. He pairs foie gras and cape scallops, garnished with an unusual quince cannelle and beet vinaigrette. Then Frank Brightson prepares the entree at his New Orleans namesake restaurant. It's a filo dough packet containing crab meat, wild mushrooms, and spinach. Finally, dessert is done by Stanton Ho at the Las Vegas Hilton. It's a multi-step creation featuring jellified mango puree and lemongrass white chocolate mousse. In 1989, when Roland Licioni took over La Francaise north of Chicago, the fame of the superb restaurant only grew. He won the Beard Award for Best Chef Midwest and scored as one of America's top tables in Gourmet's Reader's Poll. His first course spotlights his incomparable technique, foie gras and scallops. The chef begins by prepping a quince. It's been around for about 4,000 years, but is not particularly popular in America. Its taste has been described as a cross between an apple and a pear. The fruit is cored, sectioned, and cut into a large dice. The hard, dry flesh goes into a little simple syrup, then into the oven. And those are gonna have to be cooked very slow in the oven. Uh, for a little bit, at least an hour and a half. Very slow in the oven, like uh, 350 degrees. It's covered with a piece of parchment paper with a hole for ventilation. And then put in the oven. After the quince comes out of the oven, it's put into a food processor and pureed. Meanwhile, beet juice is reduced for a vinaigrette. The beet juice is reduced and the chef proceeds. So we have uh, some balsamic vinegar. Here I have some olive oil, a little bit salt, and a white pepper. So with a whisk, I'm going to mix the beet tradition with the olive oil and the balsamic and salt and pepper. After emulsification, the vinaigrette is added to diced cooked beets and roasted macadamia nuts. So with this uh, vinaigrette, I'm going to mix a uh, toast with the salad here, with the beets. Some few macadamia nuts already uh, roast. I'm going to toast right The chef preps a piece of foie gras by flattening it slightly in plastic wrap. I'm going to seasoning the cape scallop and the foie gras. On both sides. The foie gras I'm going to pass on the flour. And you tap gently, you don't want not too much flour on the foie gras. The scallops and foie gras will be sautéed in different pans. So first I'm going to set the salad, the beet salad first. I have a small ring here. Then my period of uh, queens here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some kennel. So I'm going to make uh, two kennel of uh, queens.
The foie gras goes into a little hot browned butter. So you have to make sure your pan is hot for to cook the foie gras. So what you want on the foie gras, you have to make sure you're going to have a nice color on each side. Saute for a total of about three minutes. So what you can do, you can flip over to see the color, okay? And now we have a nice color on the foie gras here. The cape scallops are also sauteed in hot butter. Now my foie gras is ready. The foie gras is drained on a paper towel. In the cape scallop, you have to make sure you give a nice color and caramelize. The chef now completes the plate. The foie gras is going to be right here. In the cape scallop. I'm going to put down the A bit of vinegar dressing. And for the fin and final touch, I have some uh, small finger mash. A final garnish is sliced white truffle. From his comfortable restaurant at the River Bend in New Orleans, Frank Brightson is, as much as anyone in the city, redefining Louisiana cooking. In 1998, he was awarded the long overdue Best Chef Southeast by the James Beard Society. His entree is crab meat, spinach, and mushrooms in phyllo. Then we're going to start by sauteing our ingredients. Uh, we're going to saute our mushrooms uh, in whole butter. And today we have wild lobster mushrooms and wild chanterelle mushrooms. You can use shiitakes or whatever your preference is or whatever you find available. And we're just going to saute the mushrooms for a couple of minutes on just until they begin to soften. Season with a little bit of our salt and pepper mixture. This is salt, white pepper, and cayenne pepper. Once our mushrooms begin to soften, we're going to pull them off the heat and transfer them to a plate to cool. And now we'll saute our spinach. The fresh spinach is also cooked in butter and seasoned with the salt and pepper mixture. Once it's wilted, we'll transfer our spinach to the plate with the mushrooms to cool. And now we'll saute our crab meat. We'll start again with a little softened unsalted butter. We're going to add some thinly sliced green onions. And we're 
going to use two kinds of crab meat. We're going to use claw crab meat. This is from Louisiana Blue Crabs. And also jumbo lump crab meat, also from Louisiana Blue Crabs. I like to use a combination of claw and lump crab meat because each has a different flavor and a different texture, and I like to get that balance in every dish. We're going to add a little bit of our salt and pepper mixture. You want to saute the crab meat just until it's heated through. The crab meat is already cooked, and you just want to heat it through and not break it up too much. The sautéed products are cooled and then enclosed in phyllo dough. Lay it onto a clean, dry surface, and you want to brush this completely with melted butter. It's best to have the butter a little bit warm so that it's nice and runny, and that way you don't get too much butter in the pastry. A lot of this butter will cook out when you bake the pastry, but you have to butter every sheet so that it gets nice and flaky and golden brown. We're going to take another sheet and lay it on top of our first one. And you want to stagger it a little bit. Stagger the corners a little bit. Again, brush with butter. A third sheet. Again, staggering the corner a little bit. Repeat the buttering process. And finally, a fourth sheet of phyllo dough. Staggering the corners. Buttering. We're gonna start with our cooled crab meat, which we've sauteed, just in the center of the pastry. Then we'll add our sauteed mushrooms right on top of the crab meat. And finally, our sauteed spinach. Right on top. Now what you want to do is carefully pick up the edges of your phyllo pastry. Working with one hand, gather up the edges and then crimp, picking up the edges as you go around in a circular motion. Just like making a little bundle or package. When you have all the edges gathered up, use your fingers to twist the top, crimping it like so, and that'll hold your pastry together while you bake. Now we want to take some more butter and gently brush the outsides and the bottom of the pastry. Bake at 450 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. The package is baked in a greased pie pan. And phyllo dough is very delicate. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a coffee cup and a sheet of aluminum foil, mold the foil into a dome, And this will rest on top of our pastry to keep the edges of the top from burning. The chef begins the sauce with butter. Some finely diced shallots. Very quickly sauteed. Shelled pistachios. And these are julienne dried tomatoes. It's good to let the tomatoes soak in slightly warm water for a few minutes before you julienne them. That'll soften them up a little bit. Lightly saute. We'll add a little bit of our salt and pepper seasoning and some Chardonnay or dry white wine. Our 
I also like to add a little bit of white vinegar to give a little bit of tartness to the beurre blanc. Bring the wine to a boil. Let it reduce slightly. And then we'll finish the sauce by mounting it with a little bit of softened butter. When you add this butter, you want to shake the skillet vigorously back and forth so that it incorporates the butter into the sauce. And our pastry should be done. We'll take off our foil dome. And you can see how the pastry is browned nice and evenly on all sides, not too dark. Nice and crispy and flaky. Right to the center of the plate. And for garnish, we'll take a blanched chive and just twist that around the top. In the 90s, Las Vegas emerged as one of the surprise dining destinations. Several of the country's star chefs have opened operations for the not too mysterious reason that there is a lot of money in Vegas. Stanton Ho is pastry chef at the Las Vegas Hilton and presents lemongrass infused mousse. This dish is so complex it could actually take up three entire shows. It involves a lemon biscuit, a meringue-like confection, a mango compote which contains warm and cold mango puree and white rum, tweel cookies which are shaped in a round mold, and lemongrass infused white chocolate mousse which is the element demonstrated. Get the full extent of the lemongrass flavor. The chef begins by boiling milk, which has been infused with lemongrass for 24 hours. Egg yolks, lemon juice, and sugar are combined. Bring your lemongrass to boil, then down to simmer. In the meantime, we'll whip the egg yolks over a double boiler to a pale yellow or ribbon consistency. Gelatin sheets, which were softened in tap water, are added. The simmering lemongrass milk is tempered into the egg yolks. After a bit of whisking, lemon zest is added. At this point, add in your lemon rinds. Okay, followed by your white chocolate. The white chocolate pieces melt in the warm mixture and the bowl is cooled over an ice bath. What you want to obtain is a stage where it's just starting to congeal. If you make the mistake of congealing it too much, you could always put it over a water bath again, a hot water bath, kind of break down the texture. Whipped cream is added to the mixture really evenly blend it into the mixture. After part of the whipped cream is incorporated, that mixture is then poured into the remaining whipped cream. Then using a spatula, the mousse mixture is completed. This will ensure that you have a full body mousse, which is light in texture. The mango puree domes have set and the chef begins to construct the dessert. First, some mousse goes into ring molds with a biscuit base and a thin sponge cake covering the sides. Usually I fill it about half ways before before putting in the mango compote.
more mousse is used to fill the mold. The top is smoothed with a spatula and the molds are frozen solid. After freezing, then unmolding, plastic strips which line the mold are removed. A dramatic presentation includes slices of mango and kiwi. Since being a lemongrass, I pulled some sugar just to emulate that lemongrass look. These were the ginger lace twills. Fresh raspberries, blueberries, and more mango and kiwi go into the cookie. All right. Finally, mango puree. You could also put some berries here. That's it.